Okay, so we discussed about that yesterday. What is the uh, general overview of the SAP and how it will be started? So, yes. uh, what is the purpose of the SAP, the software? And we have other softwares like in the market, Oracle, and uh, other ERP softwares we have. Okay, even we have multiple softwares, <coughs> still we could able to survey in the market because we have the high level protection. Protection. And if and speed are fast. Yes, okay. So, oh, so just one minute. Okay. Okay, so uh, what do you mean to say that we have other ERP software, but still we are surveying the market because we are in the top. Okay, we are top in the software because uh, because of one of thing is every time we are upgrading to the as per the customer needs, how the customers which is required, how they are looking into that and the technology how it is improved that based on that based on that we also improving from our side SAP and the, releasing that latest versions with our new technologies and everything so that's what uh in the market even we have so many erp packages that means erp software so sap is the one of the best uh software so now leading leading if you think about the what are the software which is leading into the market one is sap one other one is oracle okay so these okay. are the two, two other uh they are surveying in the market and uh, and moreover the SAP which is almost every uh, it is touching to the every client like uh, most of the 99.9% .9 of the, all the clients they are using SAP so I'm not saying about the other software they are using or not they are not using but most of the clients they are using SAP okay so okay. it is not it is not only SAP uh, they can use multiple softwares also Maybe they can use SAP along with SAP. They can use Oracle along with SAP. They can use some other ERP software and all. But yeah, so SAP is one of the uh, best package. What a ERP package that surveying in the market. Okay. Okay. And let's go to the uh, just uh, we'll go for the what course content will be there. Okay. So uh, can I able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. So going forward. Okay, we will be going for the introduction. Okay, so uh, the introduction, what we are discussing about that uh, SAP, SAP journey, how it started SAP, and what uh, what is the basic things which we need to understand in the SAP software. Okay, so everything and SAP journey. I said right, SAP journey, how it started from the starting to ending. Now, how it is upgraded and what uh, kind of the new technologies improved into the SAP. So everything we'll discuss in the SAP journey. Then okay. areas of market material management. Okay. So yesterday we discussed right purchasing, purchasing inventory, inventory management, inventory management and uh, invoice simplification. Right. So that is what then what kind of a business process we are following because generally uh, SAP is the like uh, it's completely for the business purpose. Right. So when we talking about business Obviously, we they have this own business process, right? Everyone they are following their own own kind of the own style of the process, right? Business process. So yes. SAP provided that some standard business process which is like MM material management. Okay, this is the uh, they are just looking into the multiple MNCs companies and what they are following the process and based on that they design some process steps into SAP. Okay, so. Okay. It is advising that okay you can follow this process but still if the customer is following different process that also we can map there is no problem for that okay so standard business process is that like the more major kind of the businesses they are following what kind of the steps following while doing the business process that like uh, what procurement process they are following what sales process they are following okay what customer services they are following like that okay okay so that we'll discuss about it. Then coming to the, I said, right? Even if we have the standard, then maybe customer uh, obviously will follow the, their own style of the process. Because if you see that, uh, uh, Amazon is there. So what Amazon will do? 
Amazon will not manufacturing any product. Amazon will not uh, keep the stock into the their inventory location. What they will do? Uh, Amazon will take the orders from the customer That's and nice. informing to the informing to the nearest supplier. Okay, so this is order we received. Okay, just to take this order and supply the goods to the customer. Then we'll take it. Uh, whatever the profit we are getting, then we'll discuss about it. Right? Yes. Obviously, right? It's like a third party, right? So yes. imagine not following that they are not manufacturing or they are not delivering to the customer directly. <clears throat> it all, it and all, the the delivery will be happen from the nearest to supplier, not from the Amazon, right? Even you are getting the Amazon Amazon with logo, uh, maybe so the packet and everything. If it is getting from logo also, it is just just like the local vendor he is packing. The product is from the local vendor only, right? Yes. Correct. So Correct. they are following their own style of business, right? So uh, if suppose I'm the uh, person who are running the some dairy farm, okay, I'm manufacturing the uh, like paneeru, I am manufacturing some cord, ghee, butter, and then I am supplying to the goods to the customer. So it is the like we just dealing with the customer directly, right? So directly, yeah. right? So everyone they have their their own style. So, so like we have this different kind of the special procurement scenarios other than the standard business process. Okay, so we have some uh, kind of the special procurement process which the business is following. That how we can do, how we can achieve into the software that we are discussing about that. Okay, okay. so that is also will be covered under that. Then uh, I said right, it's not only material management. The other areas also integrated, like production orders, uh, the consumption okay. of the raw materials, plant maintenance, right? So, what are the integration areas are there? See, let's say example first. If you go to production planning, then why the production people have to connect with the material management people? Why they have to be integrated with the material management people? For the production of any raw materials, is there any? Uh, more number of supply. If you want to, the customer requires for the more number of supply, then uh, there is a requirement from the production. Okay, so production people will manufacturing the product, right? He yes. they are manufacturing the product. So when they are manufacturing the product, okay. So for FG product, final product. So to produce the final product, you need you need some components, right? If suppose I said right, uh, if you want if you want to manufacturing the bike, so what you need bike, you need light, okay, you need uh, water, uh, petrol tanker, so the petrol tank, that's engine, seat, engine, and wheels, okay, screws, chain, all these things. The different different parts we we require. So again, that parts will come from the different different uh, uh, manufacturers, right? So yes. when it is required from the different manufacturer, that means so from the different vendor, obviously they will be reaching to us and they are requesting that okay, I just planning to manufacture that bike, so I need spare parts, I need uh, raw materials, I need finish uh, semi finished goods, okay, all these things they will ask, right? So obviously production planning people have to connect with the material management, right? Okay. Like if suppose projects project systems is there. So what project system team will do? Okay, they are uh, planning. They are uh, like uh, started with a new project. Like let's assume that there is a construction of one villa. Okay, there is a construction of one villa that cost of the one crore. Okay, so we just created that. Okay, this is my project. I'm just starting to construct a villa. Now I'm just dividing that. Okay, for to man to build a, uh, our villa. Okay. To construct construct that building. So, what kind of the article which is required? Okay, again, I need sand, bricks, and I need to paint. I need workers. I need crane services. I need okay water services. All these things, everything which is required. Now, so again, what they will do? Project system team. Okay, again, they will be finding that the proper resources. They are finding the proper article materials, all these things which is required. Again, they will connect to metal management people. Yeah. Okay. Right. Again, 
uh, in that project maybe some restrictions like oh, you must be spent amount for the 10 lakhs you must be spent 20 lakhs you must be sent for 30 lakhs so there must be some limit right because if the customer is paying talk on one crore i can sp I cannot spend more than one crore right right i, I must be need some uh, profit also right yes so that 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 everything will be uh, in the budget budget controlling right yes so again they will be connecting with the middle management people okay so like project system is done then middle man and warehouse management okay once i receive the product where exactly i need to be put the stock so i have the location okay i have the inventory location but again inventory location level if i have an empty space let's say i have the empty space okay i can keep my uh whatever the stock we received i just put it into the my inventory location but if it is suppose pharma or if it is some chemical industry so what they will do they will be allotting that some particular bins like okay i have the 10 racks i have 10 uh, uh height 10 10 centimeters of height of files okay so there are if you go to Medi mediflex or if you go to some apollo pharmacy what will happen if you see that there are so many racks are there okay so there's why because we why we need racks because there are lakhs of products we are we are selling okay so it is very difficult if i don't have proper rack and i don't have proper bin if i don't have proper uh, storage area okay then it might be very difficult to serve, uh, supply the goods to the customer immediately right so how they can able to find that product in the bin because they are already noted that okay this product should be go to the this rack this column this okay this row and this column and this is the bin so that's why they are directly going to that rack and they are picking up that product and selling to the customer right so that right. will come under the warehouse that will be come under the warehouse so we just need to be received the goods if you have the proper warehouse management again the keeping the stock at the storage bin level storage area level rack and uh, column and uh, row basis where you need to be keep the stock that again it will come under the warehouse management so again okay. we are integrating with the warehouse management people okay so material management is different warehouse management is different okay okay, okay. when warehouse management it is required if you have the uh, multiple materials okay and it's very very like uh, minor products like uh, okay uh if it is like a small small product and if it is very difficult to put it in the open space okay then we can go to warehouse management and build our warehouse area with a different different racks different different aisles and different different pallets different different cottons like we can put and we can uh, store them our products right so again material management will be connecting with the warehouse management then okay. again, material management will be connected with finance. Obviously, they have to be connected with finance, right? Why we need to connect with finance? Uh, after sales. After sales or after purchasing. Purchasing. Anything, right? Stock related, okay, the value of the products, we need to be noted into the our accounting. Because okay. if I receive today 10 products, okay, tomorrow if I see that nine products only there, then a finance team if they are just calculating up the what is the inventory value if it is there in the store okay if it is a uh, like it is showing only nine quantity but we we restored as the 10 quantity what happened for the remaining one quantity so you must be fine that right so yes. obviously finance team have to be uh get the information what you are receiving what you are issuing what you are uh damaging what you are scrapping everything you have to be uh, how to be informed to the finance team so again that is the integration with finance finance right so like every hr is there what is the purpose of hr if suppose i am the person who we are doing outsourcing what is the purpose of outsourcing outsourcing do you know that or what is the purpose of outsourcing outsourcing uh, searching for the candidates so so contracts right yeah. so if suppose some my client is requested that they need some sap consultant 
Okay. So then if I don't have a consultant, I can get the contractor. Okay. I'm just uh, recruiting the person and I'm just allotting to the, the project, project. Right. So obviously human resource also on a part of that, right? HR also, they have, they must be have the employee ID. They must be have subcon ID or contractor ID. And you are utilizing that, how many hours you are utilizing and what project you are allotted, how much you are getting profit on this resource. Okay, what is the billing from the customer? What is the billing to the vendor? All these things which is required, right? So yes. like like every area, it will be integrated with the material manager. Okay, so major areas are MMFI, MMSD. What is the SD? Sales and uh... Distribution, okay, sales distribution. and distribution. Okay, sales and distribution is nothing but like a one, uh, it is completely reverse of the meter management. Like we are buying the product from the outside, there we are selling the customer. We are selling the product to the customer. So okay. ST means the people who are selling the product to the customer, they will be dealing that all these things, customer sales. Okay, okay? so they will get the orders. And then Actually, the ST uh, candidates, uh, they are related to the customers only. Yeah, so ST are the completely related to customer. MM is yeah. completely related to vendor. Vendor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And ST people, what they will do? They will get orders and they will be... Why ST people have to connect with the metal management people? ST people... So how you can confirm to the customer? If the customer is asking... If the customer is asking, I need some product, okay, if you are not integrating with material management people, so how you, you know that whether the stock is available or not available? We are maintaining the uh, stock. Uh, stock, who who handling that stock? MM people. So they have to be integrated with the material management, right? Yes. Okay, so availability, availability, stock availability check. Okay, so yeah, okay. that is one thing, and there are some process like uh, okay, uh, if I said right, third party process. So in the third party process, what will happen? Okay, when I get the customer order, okay, I'm just uh, informing to the customer uh, we are not delivering the product directly. Okay, the, our when the supplier who will be delivering okay. the product. Yes. Okay? So we are integrating with the MM people, saying that we got this order. Please arrange the uh, purchase orders to the uh, vendor and inform to them to supply the goods to the customer directly. So okay. he, they are integrating with the metal mine. Right? Okay. And generally, if you say that uh, MM will be taking care about the inbounds and uh, ST taking care about the outbounds. Simple words, if you want to say. What is the inbound, in, inbound and outbound? Inbound is nothing but like uh, we are getting the stock into our location. Okay? Yes. We are From purchasing home. the goods. We are purchasing the goods, right? Yes. And outbound means it is going outside. That means customer. We are to selling the, the goods to the customer. So the goods are going outside. Okay. So sometimes what will happen? We also need to be uh, connect with the ST team. MM team have to be connect with the ST team because we are using inbound and outbound. What case it is inbound and outbound? Why we need to use both in the MM process? Inbound, uh, actually, the we we are getting the stock from the vendor to our location. Okay. Outbound, uh, whereas we are delivering the stock to the customer. Uh, customer delivery center will take care by ST only. Yes. We are we are, we don't need to be worried about that. But now, what my question was, MM team, at what case MM team will take care inbound and outbound? What will they will do? Transfers, stock transfers. See, yeah. stock transfer. Yeah. What will be happen? I, the receiving plan and supply plan both is the my plans only, right? Okay. Okay. So in that case, I'm just moving my stock to the one location from, to other. From one plan to another plan. Another plan. So one branch to other branch, right? Okay. So in that case, who will take care about that? So and the both plans are belongs to the only the MM consultant. Oh, yeah, obviously, right? Obviously, yeah, obviously, right? Because yeah. We are talking about the stock, right? So we are integrating with ST team. Boss, I'm doing this process. So I want to do in outbound as well. Because supply plant will issue the stock. Right? Okay. 
the supply plant will be issuing the stock and receiving plant will receive the goods. Okay. okay. So I said inbound will be is a part of the MM. But outbound is also is needed when it is stock transfer. So in this case, I just need to be connect with the uh, ST team, sales and distribution team. Okay, we are doing, we are planning to do outbound from the my plan to the other plan. So we just need your help to connect, how to connect the process and everything. Okay. So that was the MM and ST integration. Okay. Okay. Clear? Clear? Clear. Okay, so like different different modules are there. Every module we are integrated. Right? So that is what we will be discussing in the further link in the classes. Then master data. So what is the master data? What is the transactional data? What is the configuration data? That we'll discuss furtherly. But I'll just give you that. Okay, if you have the products. Okay, if suppose you have the ten products are there your manufacturing products. So you must okay. be defined that what is that product. First, you have to define that what is that product. If suppose I have that uh, some kind of the uh, sandal. Okay. I have some kind of the sandal soap. Okay. So first okay. I have to define that. Okay. This is the sandal and this is the 200 mg and this is the we are selling like pieces or maybe bulk if you are selling like pallets or boxes. So like we have to define our own master data for each product. Okay. Then when we get the order from the customer or when we are ordering from the vendor, I just in saying that, okay, this is the product which we need. This product have the this characters. This product have the this is the grams. And this product have the this kind of the material. So this product have the he is the person who is the responsible for this procuring the product. So like, okay. The basic information that is that will not never change. It is stable information. Like you see that uh, sandal soap. So the sandal soap, 200 mg. So that never will not change for that product. And the color, which is like brown or yellow, that will not never change, right? And we just uh, always uh, uh, calculating in the eaches or pieces or it might boxes. That never will not change. And the person who is uh, taking responsibility, that will never change. So like, what are the fixed information, the stable information, which is very helpful to do the transaction, that will be maintaining the master data. Okay. Why we need to maintain master data again? Because, and I'm just creating the purchase order. So today I ordered 10 pieces. Tomorrow I'm ordering 10 pieces. Day after tomorrow, I'm ordering 10 pieces for the same product. Okay, every time I need to enter that, okay, this is sandal box. 200 gram, give me 100 pieces. Okay, this is the cost. This is like, every time if I want to enter the manually the information, how long it will take time to do this one? It's very difficult, right? So what I can do, I just give some code for this one. Okay, when this code I enter, then all the information which is relevant to that product, it automatically captured. Okay. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So, like if you see that in Amazon, you ordering some product, okay? So Apple is there, okay? So there will be some packaging uh, serial number or maybe material number will be defined, okay? If you are giving that that number, automatically the further information uh, about that product will get automatically, right? Okay. So if you want to say simple, if you are uh, transporting, you are doing some transport, okay? So uh, the number they are given one number. So if I just enter the number, then the respect, okay. Uh, if you want to go with a simple example, uh, you have other card, simple other card, okay. So why we have the other card number separate for each individual? Because it's identity. It, identity. Right? So each individual person have their own identity. So when I just enter this number, immediately I will get the information of this. You, what is your name? When is you, your birthday? And who? Okay, what kind of the gender you are and where is your address? What is your mobile number? What is your verification? All these things which is coming. So these are okay. not never changed, right? So, okay. so these are the master data. Okay. okay. So I can use this one in the furtherly by transaction. Like if I'm going to the SIM card, okay, I'm just planning to go to SIM. Okay, you SIM. Something like we are planning to buy SIM. Okay. 
so uh, they are asking that give me your uh, all these address proofs you give me uh, where you are staying where you are all these things not required because i just have the id number which is like order card if you enter the order card then it will be verified that all the information then it will be verifying your product Anna? your identity okay clear yeah. so like every material have the every product have the they own identity of product code product okay. id so okay. that product id we are using for the when i'm just planning to buy the product i will be using that id and i will be buying the product and the product id and everything about the product details and about the vendor details all are available in the master data yes exactly okay. your product information vendor master information customer master information okay employee, employee master employee master information okay. delivery date the product delivery date everything should be Delivery date it depends. Okay, they, that also you can put it in the master data. It, okay. it as usual it will be take two days or three days. Based on that, the delivery date will be calculated. Or you can give manually because delivery date is the when you required how system knows. Okay. Right. But the product ID, product description, that is a common right everywhere. Right. Okay. So master okay. data will be have that information. And coming to configuration data. To do all this master data, to do all these transactions, to do all these reports, everything. Okay. What is the background of setup you are doing in the software level? Okay. That will be done from the configuration. That means if suppose you have the product, one product is there. Okay. So that product is raw material. So how do you know that what that is raw material or packing material? By inspection. Sorry. We're seeing the product uh, inspection, physical inspection. Physical inspection, okay. That's looking into the product, you know that. See, suppose let's say, I have chili powder, okay. I have chili powder. Now I have the chili powder, I'm, I'm, I'm asking to you, okay, I have chili powder. Tell me about that. This is raw material, finished goods or packing material. Hmm? It is raw material or packing material or finished goods or semi-finished goods. Are perishables. What is that for product? You don't know, right? Yes. Because if I'm using as a raw material, if I'm just preparing some food, I'm using as a raw material. If you are manufacturing the uh, uh, chili powder and you are selling the chili powder, then your point of view it is finished goods, right? Okay. You are selling it, right? So community to community, that is a characters will be changed, right? So okay. in the configuration, what we'll tell you, okay, we'll give that different kind of the materials types type of the materials we can create that means like okay, raw material packing material finished goods semi finished goods perishables okay non valuable materials non stock material like that we will be creating different type of materials okay the type of material code we are using when you creating the material okay if i am creating now red chili powder in my company i'm just mentioning that this is the consumer has a finished goods Okay, if you are creating the chili powder in your system, your company, you are considering that product as a raw material. Okay, so the type of material. So how how we know these all things, material type, material group, what kind of groups and all, what type of the procurement you are doing, everything will be set up in the background, in the configuration level. Then furtherly the master data and transaction data, they are using that information to define the identity. Okay. Clear? Clear. Okay. So like you are set up that. Suppose let's say jump one more example. I have the pricing structure is there. Okay. So in my company, I have simple pricing structure. Like I, I have only basic price and I have a transportation charge and I have final price. Let's assume that we don't we don't have any taxes and all. We just like a basic price, transportation charge, and just like a final product cost. Okay. But in your project, in your uh, maybe in your company, the pricing structure are different. Maybe I have the basic price, I have discount, I have surcharges, I have packing charges, I have labor charges, I have uh, loading charges, unloading charges, and I have the transportation charges, and I have the taxes. Okay, I have again freight charges. Everything there are so many so many charges are there. So again, your structure will be different. My structure will be different. Anna? So how they know the structure we have to follow? That again will be defining in the configuration. Okay. Okay. 
that is what a consultant will do okay so okay. generally normal procedures and all transaction every transaction normal process and all will do by okay end users end users means the company client from the client side whoever they are working they will be doing the regular transactions like creating the po sales orders so this is not our job our job is to supporting to that to do the configuration backend so that is the okay. our job okay some okay. um, our main role is configuring that means designing that process and set up the process and and again we must be know about the transactions and master data because we if we know the process how it will works then only we can do configuration no you okay. see suppose let's say i am the me mechanic okay let's say suppose, suppose i am the mechanic okay okay if suppose i don't know how this bike will be work then i cannot do anything no? because i don't know how it is uh, works and uh, if i want to do some testing a uh, test ride and do the some checkups and all if i don't know how it to write this one okay 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 so if i don't know how to operate that okay then there is no use if you are doing if you are uh, did some kind of uh, setup and everything because you don't know how it works okay right so you must be aware about that so that's why we must be aware about it even we are only responsible for the configuration and the support we must be aware about that the what how to how the users are trying to do the transactions how the users are trying to create the master data how that uh, users are trying to get the reports all these things you must be aware then only you can able to do the all this configuration okay 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 clear uh, clear yeah so it's what the configuration you understand that right? what is the configuration difference and uh, what is the master data and transaction data right okay yes okay that will be doing that and the uh, reports you said right how reports will works uh, and uh, how differently they are looking into that what are the standard reports what information it is providing that okay actually in the reports uh, what we act, uh, after the uh, we have, after delivery of the to the customer we will generate the report no it's whatever it may be say it's not only after delivery or before delivery or after receiving the order or before receiving that everywhere you have the requirement like okay suppose let's say what are the list of the okay how many uh, purchase orders like, uh, today uh for example uh, we have to check the company profit and loss we have to we will generate the report like that yeah that's okay okay, okay. So, suppose i am the procurement advisor okay i just want to see that how many proposals we got how many purchase orders which is created okay 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 so how how, how i can see that today how many purchase orders created the how many purchase orders still it is pending how many purchase orders is gr completed how we okay. know that Okay. Okay. So that is what reporting. Then enhancement, customization enhancement. So some procedures. Okay, some procedure what will be happen? We don't know. We might be not possible to do with standard because uh, I said right, customers their own style of the procedures they are following. suppose that procedure is not defined okay so how we can do that again with the customization so by using that their procedure how they are following based on that we will be designing that and we will be doing that okay so the enhancement and customization is nothing but like a whatever the other than the standard or that means okay whatever the already sap software it is doing other than that if the customer is looking into that some kind of the uh, customized way okay then like can, additional options uh, it's not additional option or it may be existing options they have okay. some uh, as per the customer uh, requirements like so i will give you an example suppose let's say i have a sports car okay suppose i am the almost 6.2 inches let's say so that i am 6.2 inches 
So okay. sports score, it like I'm just looking into that. It like a five point to ten, five point eleven. The max height will get, right? So I just requested that boss. Okay, this is five point eleven, but I am almost six point two. I could not able to sit and drive that. So can you do some customized way? The procedure like okay. So <laughs> then we they will be modified and they will do that. Right? Right, so like if suppose the customer is following different procedure and that procedure is not there in the standard SAP, we can define that. Okay. <laughs> we can define a new procedure. We can define the restrictions. We can do all these things. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Then I dock an interface. Okay. So what did this means? Uh, if I have the third party system, that means I said right. We have SAP system, but it is not necessary. Everyone, uh, every procedure should be followed with SAP. Okay, they can do finance, uh, finance part. They can do Oracle and uh, warehouse part. They can do SAP and some other procedures. They are following into some other software. They can do that because okay, uh, it's not necessary. Every procedure they have to be followed in the single software. Okay. So if they are following multiple software or multiple connections with the different third parties software, then how you are integrating your data to their system? So that is called interface. Okay. So this call interface. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Okay. Suppose let's say uh, you have the store. Okay. You have the store, which is grocery store, and you are using point of sale, and you are using some third party hybrid, uh, some software you are using. Let's say, okay, that hybrid sale software you are using purpose of just uh, taking orders and selling the product and uh, generating the bill. Okay. okay, but the inventory and the financial part and uh, all production everything will be happened in the back end from the SAP. Oh. Okay, so organization level, whatever the manufacturing, production, everything which is happening, the inventory, procurement, everything will be happening in the SAP. But the front end, the sales, what are the point of sales? The where you are using the suppose you are going to Judio, or if you are going to groceries, some um, Mandeep, somewhere if you are going to there, they are using some. Uh, uh, some displays, right? They are using some software to generate a bill. Okay, so that is a third party sale. So you are you are sending the information from the my SAP system to their point of sales software. What information you sending? What inventory it is available? Because when customer is coming and saying that oh, the, I I need this product, I have the, I have to check in the system point of sale system whether the stock is available or not available. Okay. So, if the stock is available or not available, how I know? Because again, that inventory information comes from the SAP. Okay. Okay. So like interface will be like that, or non-SAP to non-SAP, SAP to SAP, SAP to non-SAP, like that, it is integrated. Okay? okay. It might be same system also. Okay. So SAP to SAP also. Suppose I'm using SAP, the supplier using SAP, but both are in the different organization, both are in the different, different version. So I just need to send my information to supplier. Okay. Okay. Again, their SAP box, my SAP box to their SAP box, how you can send that information. Okay. So all these things will be like interfaces. Okay. okay. That data migration. Data migration is nothing but like a if you started your business, okay, or if you are already running the business, but you are not using any software, or if you are using some third party software. So you, now you are planning to do the SAP software, okay? Now, how that data like existing materials, exist, existing stocks, existing POs, how you can create in the new system? Because you are planning to run the new SAP system, right? Like uh, they can uh, convert from like uh, Oracle to SAP like that? Yeah, yes. So Oracle to SAP or uh, maybe they don't have any software, they want to be new software, anything, whatever it will be, okay? <laughs> So the data migration is nothing but like yeah, how okay. you are migrating the data from non-SAP to SAP or SAP to SAP. Uh, like if they are you know, not using any software, just they are uh, um, starting to you know, um, 
using a software like SAP, they they can convert the data into the SAP. Okay. Like. They will be maintaining in the Excel the data, and they will yes. be up migrating to data into SAP. SAP. Okay. Okay. If they don't have proper software, it might be have some Excel file, right? They have the recording somewhere, no? Okay. So they will be maintaining the Excel and they will be uploading that. So data okay. migration. Okay. Okay. Then it is mock interview, obviously. After that, what you understand and how you understand all these things. Okay. Okay. okay then I think I'll stop today class. Okay. So okay. we'll continue tomorrow. Okay. 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 And uh, uh, just let me know any questions. Are there any uh, questions you have?